There's a good chance that even if you have heard of Renault's recently resurrected sports car brand, you don't know much about it, including how to pronounce that name. Alpine. No, it's Alpine. Not Alpine. Not Alpine. Alpine. We call it Alpine, but we respect it if the British want to call it Alpine. It's been 25 years since we've seen a new sports car wearing this badge, but rewind to the 60s and 70s and you'd find it on rally champions, Le Mans winners and some pretty cool road cars too. Well, this year Alpine is back with this, the A110, a lightweight two-seater that bears the same name and more than a passing resemblance to Alpine's most famous sports car. In bringing back Alpine, we really wanted to go back to the DNA that still lives in people's hearts and minds uh, to this day. That is a compact, lightweight, rear-engine sports car that is really going to be fun to drive every day and on the racetrack. Priced at around £45,000, the A110 is gunning straight for Porsche's Cayman. And while the Alpine might not have the badge kudos of the Porsche, it does have another trick up its sleeve. Thanks to its lightweight aluminium chassis and an obsession with dieting that includes fitting forged double wishbone suspension components and these gorgeous Sabelt seats that are half the weight of the Recaros in a Megane RS, the A110 tips the scales at just 1,080 kilograms. Behind those seats, there's a new 1.8 litre four cylinder petrol engine producing 250 horsepower. Zero to 62 takes 4.5 seconds and the tiny curb weight means it emits just 137 grams per kilometre of CO2. The tyres also come with some very small numbers. They're 195s on the front, 225s on the back with the standard 17-inch wheels and only 10 millimetres wider if you step up to the 18s. So we've really set the car up to be uh, playful. We haven't tried to get ultimate sideways grip in the car. We're not looking to get outright lap times on the circuit, but we're looking to give you a car that's going to deliver the, the, the biggest miles, whether you're driving it on a mountain road in the Alps or in some bumpy back road in North Wales. The A110 is tiny in the metal and the styling has plenty of classic Alpine cues, including those iconic headlights, the wraparound rear window and a low spoiler-free tail made possible by the use of underfloor aerodynamics. And inside you can forget memories of that plasticky Clio you hired on holiday last year. The quality is really impressive, as it should be in a car of this price. There is one thing missing though, and that's a gear lever for a manual transmission. The A110 is paddle shift only, but surely they're considered a manual. Yeah, obviously we considered the option. Um, we're really confident that double clutch transmission is the right answer for the vast majority of customers. There are always going to be a hardcore fan base that are always going to want to stick. But if we look at the way high performance sports cars are going, this is the right answer. You know, it's a comfortable car that you can drive every day and then you can go ballistic when the road opens out or you do a track day. Double clutch is, is definitely the right answer and we're very yeah. confident on that. Coming back to market with a credible sports car is an important part of establishing the Alpine brand. But don't be surprised to see an Alpine SUV and petrol electric hybrids in the coming years, even if Alpine's boss won't admit it. In the longer term, we have many ideas for other cars, maybe higher volume cars for Alpine. But frankly, firstly, it's not been decided yet. Secondly, it's not our priority today because our absolute priority now is to make sure this car lives up to the expectation that people have in Alpine. But in the longer term, clearly, there is an, a trend towards electrification, not just for Renault Group, and as you know, we're a leader in that, but in the market in general. So in our future ideas, we have some ideas that might be electric. I'm not excluding it for Alpine, but again, it's not our focus in the short term. The timing is right for Alpine to launch this car. Alpha's even lighter 4C turned out to be a disappointment, and the Cayman suddenly doesn't seem quite so perfect. Now it's swapped its flat 6 for a less charismatic flat 4. It's a shame that Caterham, Renault's original partner in this project, didn't manage to bring its version to production. But we're glad that bump didn't derail the entire programme. And we really hope this thing is as good to drive as it promises to be.